All right, three, two, one. Howdy, howdy, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Nerd Hell. My name's Robinson, and I don't know what a record button is. And my name's Stanley. I'm the e-girl in your nightmare, standing in the backside of your bed. <laughs> and today, we have a guest. A very special guest, not a normal one. Some know him as Black Mamba number 8. Some know him as the most beautiful voice to ever grace a boxing ring. Airsoft fatty, Chris. What's going on, everybody? Nothing but love here. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, hell yeah, dude. I see that you're wearing like a kick-ass Naruto shirt, my guy. That's awesome. Hell yeah, man. Nice. I got that Naruto shirt on, man. Man, mm. you, you better believe it. I, I've i never <laughs> sat down and watched Shippuden, but <laughs> due to all the Naruto <laughs> video games I've played, I've seen every episode. <laughs> How have you not watched Shippuden? Like, that's like Weeb 101. Weren't you a part of the anime club? I haven't watched it from, like, episode one to the end, but like I said, I played every video game. I know the plot. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you're kind of like that Lego Star Wars kind of thing now. Yeah, and speaking of um, Star Wars, Chris, that's one of, like, your favorite things, ain't it? <laughs> oh, my God. I've actually gotten out of Star Wars recently. Uh, really? Yeah, we're taking... Whole drastically new direction. Still the same, but uh, it's, it's a different one. Oh yeah. Well, because uh, you were starting to record like those um, like vlogs from like where you're a Jedi on a distant planet or something like that. Yeah, it's all done. Like we're done with that. We're we're moving on. Um, just personally, it became toxic to kind of make that kind of content. Just from like the lack of love I had had for the franchise over the past few years. That's with all the happened because of it i've just been like hmm it's time to change up so now we've got a lot of trail riding stuff coming up uh we're doing a lot of cannabis content doing reviews and things like that yeah. on rips that, yeah. so first of all fantastic uh i can't do weed it makes me sleepy but i did want to <laughs> ask yeah yeah everybody laughs at me i'm 270 pounds <laughs> six feet tall and i can't take a hit because i just get tired immediately <laughs> Yeah. So I, I actually did want to ask you because back in the day when like some people call it like the golden era of Star Wars where you just had the three movies and the six, it was more tight and concise. Nowadays, you've got like Mandalorian, you got the three new ones, you got Visions, you got Obi-Wan, blah, blah, blah. And I was going to ask, what, what, what do you think it was a better time to be a Star Wars fan now or then? Gotta be honest, the end of Star Wars, the Clone Wars Cartoon Network, the 2008 series, when that initially ended, not the new stuff for like the Bad Batch and things like that, when that initially ended, I, I feel like that's golden age right there. We just had the close off to the amazing backstory of Anakin Skywalker. And you know, the films that we had were paying respect to the material that's out there. And we had an amazing expanded universe. If you were, if you were a deep, deep Star Wars fan, you knew that like there was easily a hundred years worth of movies Disney could have made if they would have pulled from all that expanded universe, but they decided not to. And yeah, at the end of that, at the end of that Clone Wars series, I feel like is really where things kind of went downhill and it just kind of says that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, as someone who grew up, like the story is that like my, my grandfather, he got me the tapes when I was a kid and I wasn't allowed to watch TV for more than an hour. It was either a movie or TV. So I watched Star Wars because Star Wars was two hours. And so I thought I was cheating the system, right? But I read all the expanded universe and there's a ton of stuff too. I would have loved to see like the Darth Bane um, saga kind of put out in a film. Yes, I would have loved to see that. Uh, one that would have been really good for horror is the Darth Nihilus. Imagine a series based on that. Yeah, dude. I mean, he can, like, fucking drain a planet, like, super quick. And then just, like, be like, all right, I'm out. Bye. And He's literally a force vampire. How the hell can you not chase that concept? Force yeah. vampire. Hell yeah. I mean, there was even, like, a zombie thing where it's, like, zombie broke out on, like, an Imperial ship. Yep, uh, the <laughs> Rat Ghoul Plague. Yeah, dude. I just, it's so, it's such a shame that they just, like, Disney just decided, oh, hey, by the way, these are non canonical anymore. So, fuck you. That's the. Uh, yeah, especially since, like, the original Rogue One is a complete bastardization of what <laughs> got them. 
Yeah, he's laughing because I actually think Rogue One is probably the best out of the new series of movies that they've done. 100%, man. 100% is the best out of it all. <laughs> I, uh, in all honesty, The Mandalorian's close second, but I've only ever seen like the first half of season two. Mm. Mm. But now, um, it's tough being a Star Wars fan these days because there's so much that's been injected into the series that didn't need it. Oh, the series had already been addressing. Uh, one of the things, and one thing I'll say is this. They, there are definitely people out there who overblew how much political stuff got put into the Star Wars franchise. There's yeah. definitely a lot forced in. But some of the themes they were trying to push, like, they were already hitting those themes in the background of the main story perfectly. 100%. I mean, the whole point of, like, the stormtroopers that they're fucking Nazis. Like, they're literally designed after the SS. So, and a lot of the guns that were used as blasters were World War II type machine guns. So, <laughs> you can't tell me that it's not political, right? Well, I, can't, political. I can't wait for the Star Wars ba um, Battlefield content with Dark Vader comes out with a Luger and a Colt 47. <laughs> <laughs> like, alright, it was political growing up before the New Disney stuff. But the politics were a side thing. You know, you didn't focus the movie on the themes of what the Chancellor was doing. You focused what the Jedi were doing and you had them interact with these people who had these connections, who had this life. And they learned from them. Right. If you look at, you know, Star Wars, the Clone Wars, they really did a decent job of it. Yeah. You, well, I mean, you it is a critique over war. So... <laughs> Sorry if I'm cutting you off, but that's what my well, that's fine. I talk too much sometimes. <laughs> oh, good. That's, you know, why, that's why you're a good podcast guest. <laughs> yeah, because what you don't understand is that, like, Robinson calls my, my breaks rants, and so I'll sit there and do a diatribe on, like, fucking communism or something like that, and you'll, like, have to, like, be like, okay, anyways, <laughs> next, <laughs> or get, we need he, to talk about this. He gets one rant per episode. <laughs> I'm allowed one. I have one allotment. <laughs> I get one too, but I rarely used it. The last time I used it was talking about how Kirby was a cosmic horror element. <laughs> oh, I see his face. So for the fans at home, we have face cam on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, if you want some disturbing Kirby lore, I can give it to you. In the first game, Kirby's, no, Kirby's Adventure, not Dreamland. Basically, Kirby hears a voice saying, Kirby, please reunite the Star Rod with the Fountain of Dreams. And Kirby tries to do it, and everybody's trying to stop him, right? Including, like, King Dedede. But Kirby's like, no, I heard it in a dream or something. When he does, it released an infinite nightmare demon called Nightmare. That, no joke, was gonna destroy the fucking planet. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I thought, yeah, go ahead. Little, boy, boy, hi. Oh, that's not the worst one. The, I think the worst one is Milky Way Wishes. Because in Milky Way Wishes... So, it's a funny story, because the sun and the moon start fighting each other, and the clown character marks, he's like, Kirby, Kirby, the sun and moon are fighting, you gotta go activate all the fountains of revival in order to get the, to stop. So Kirby yeah. does that, and then what it does is it, um, it revives this thing called a clockwork star. So the deep Kirby lore is that, like, in ancient days, there were the tribe of magic and the tribe of science, and they bombed themselves into extinction. And now we have all these relics, like the clockwork star, which grants a wish. And before Kirby can wish for the sun and the moon to stop fighting, Marx comes in, says, yo, make me the most powerful thing on Earth. And then he becomes Satan. Because what Marx did, he was the one who got the moon and the star and the moon and the sun to fight in the first place. And his ultimate goal is to destroy everything and then kill himself when he's done. He will devour the universe and then devour himself when he is done. <laughs> It only get that's the worst one. It, that's the worst one. It does not get worse, but yeah, that cute little pink puffball. He also has um a he has a dimension in him. Don't worry, it's a happy dimension. There are pain dimensions though. 
Like straight up dimensions where you, if you enter, it will rip you to pieces. <laughs> yeah, no, Kirby gets sucked into it multiple times, but because he's like so rubbery and strong, it can't hurt him. Yeah. This, what you're explaining to me sounds like a Stranger Things monster. Oh, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> Stranger Things was based off of Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> is that our conspiracy theory, Robinson? It's not a conspiracy if it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Dude, holy crud. I know. But, but don't worry. Oh. Th those are like the NES, SNES games I spoiled. The new ones the new ones get fucked up. <laughs> mm. I gotta ask mm. that. So, if Kirby is really a pink blob of destruction... Pure destruction that can dimension hop. Wouldn't that mean he's basically Majin Buu? Oh, 100%. But here, here's the thing. Uh, there are pure energies of destruction, right? So basically, um, the negative energy of the world will be fed into one giant amorphous energy ball that will be revived, right? And yeah. Kirby fights those. So it's believed that Kirby is the first positive energy to be born in like a billion years. Yeah. Damn, because, Bert, Kirby's getting philo uh, philosophical here, Robinson. No, <laughs> no as, because what it is is every enemy is sympathetic. There isn't like a single enemy where it's like pure evil, except for Marx. Mar m fuck Marx. Marx is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, the final boss has always just been chaos energy manifested in something or another. So, Kirby, he's kindness energy. He's compassion energy. That's why he likes to eat. Never trust somebody who doesn't like food. Mm. You're right. Don't trust. You're. Wow. That <laughs> Robinson, let's not try to break him. No. <laughs> Existential crisis. I have him for an hour. <laughs> that is... Wow. So, actually, talking about food, uh, because I notice you do a lot of cooking videos. I love cooking myself. Um, what's something that you find really difficult to get right when you're cooking? Oh, my God. That would have to be... Pork chops. Pork chops. Um, okay. Never get it right. You know, pork is one of those like very hard to cook meats because you know it's just like with pork, essentially you got to cook at the right temperature, and you know sometimes you overcook it and then it becomes you know rubbery, and sometimes you undercook it and you get dis you get sick, right? So <laughs> yeah. Um. Those videos will be slowing down as well, so we're making a lot of changes. But yeah, so the recently speaking of which is uh, Mexican diet. Nope. I uh, had someone hit me up in my DMs so like, try a little carnivore diet. Okay. So oh, like, carnivore diet isn't the diet that you only eat meat, meat and butter, meat, and butter? And animal, meat and animal products with eggs. Uh, just it's a lot of like freshly cooked meats. Mm -hmm. Eggs. I believe I can have something that's like mashed potatoes if it has egg in it, things like that. Oh. But um, I really it's just a lot of animal product, milk, cheese, meats. Mm. Um, it's a carb, a lot of more, a lot of more working out. Uh, and then eventually it'll end up cut. It'll get to a point where I'll only be eating once a day. Okay, mm. so you're gonna be doing like a one meal a day. OMAD kind of intermittent fasting. Takes a little time to get on with the carnivore diet, I guess. But I, the guy that explained it to me, because he does a lot of like working out type stuff, he explained it to me as it's animal product, meats, cheeses, eggs. You want to have a consistent workout plan. And not only that, but it'll take you a while, but eventually you'll get to a point where you'll feel full for the whole day off one meal. That's dope. All right. So like, I had to get it rolling. I just got back, last, you know, just like just for recording here. I uh, got back from Kroger's, got a steak for tonight that I'll be cooking. Oh, hell yeah. Five days for chicken. Damn. Hey, man, you're going to be eating like a fucking king. That's dope. 100%, man. 
So, two things. One, yesterday I went to Smith's, and I only buy from the clearance section. Got myself a beautiful, nearly expired T-bone for $10. I had to cook that thing as soon as I got home (laughs) before I tried to eat my dog or something. (laughs) See, but that's a good thing. If you can catch that, you're good. Oh, absolutely. If you're if you're gonna buy fresh meats, definitely go to a butcher. Get get better better quality of pet. Man, I, I wish I don't. I, I can't find one in Utah. <laughs> I mean, I used to be a butcher, but you know, that's uh that was a long time ago. So now I'm just a fucking teacher. Ooh. <laughs> well, you you would think Utah would have a couple butcher shops. Yeah, you would think that. Especially with all the um, rural areas we have around here. But I'm near Salt Lake City, so I guess not. Here here in Michigan, they're not, like, common, but you can find them, like, at least one per town. Oh, yeah, Michigan, your hometown of Battle Creek. First of all, how badass is it that you got a place called... You live in a place called Battle Creek. That just sounds like... Say that again. I moved out of Battle Creek. Oh, where are you now? Oh, if you don't want to, you might not want to divulge that information. <laughs> <laughs> Robinson's is going to be like next week. You're going to see Robinson's like eyes like above the window seal. Just looking I'm like, hey, that fatty <laughs> on today's live episode of the podcast. <laughs> we scare the shit out of airsoft fatty. <laughs> I'm like about an hour and a half up north from that about an hour and a half too. Okay. All right. Well, my question is still the same. Because um, I'm a big fella. I, I love eating. I'm also, like, I'm a personal trainer, so I did hear about the carnivore diet um, during my readings. Well, reading, studying. But I wanted to ask, uh, what's the best place to get a burger in um, Battle Creek, Michigan? If you're home making it, get the meats from Meyer, and you'll be happier than shit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> God, if you're looking for more like a cook one at a restaurant... Corner Cafe is a pretty good one. I don't know if he's still open, but like the Corner Cafe has some pretty good stuff. Ooh. Mm. All right. Mm. We really don't got like a whole lot of Ma and Pa local shops. So it's a lot of like McDonald's, Burger King, uh, Arby's, things like that. Last time I swung through there for uh, just going through it for an event, uh, I saw they finally got like a Chick fil A. That's <laughs> always cool. <laughs> oh, shit. The Baptists are taking over. Finally. <laughs> They're moving. <laughs> The Lord's chicken shall be done. <laughs> I've only like twice. I just gotta say, it is good. It's good. It's mm-hmm. good, but six dollars for that a chicken sandwich with pickles. I, I, that's not. That's not. A, that's not for me. Well, I mean, like you can actually make it yourself because what it, their secret is that they just put it the chicken and marinate in pickle juice and nope. before they fry it. And, and the love of God. And yes, the love of Jesus Christ. They have an active. They have an active priest at every KFCs, don't you know? Mm. I at KFC. Uh, I meant. No. I meant Chick Fil A. <laughs> damn it! No, at KFC they worship the devil. <laughs> yeah, KFC is Satan's chicken. Yeah. Bro, I'm pretty but, sure Colonel Sanders owned slaves back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at the way he dresses. No, it really is. It really is that kind of like, okay, and I have all this. We got some work to do today. And you guys I mean, me all day. And I don't um, want. And I don't want to see any chicken heads in y'all's pockets. We'll be checking. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my God, KFC, KFC is like. Let's be honest. Early two thousands, that shit was fire. But like nowadays, it tastes bad. It's not that great. No. I, I wouldn't know. I'm a vegetarian. Which so. is hilarious, because as soon as you said carnivore, I thought I have both sides of the spectrum to talk to now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Fatty's just eating my portion of meat, right? <laughs> hey, you know that. I mean, you know I'm always going to take your meat. Oh, please. Do. <laughs> I'll put that meat in my hands, Daddy. Please. Mm. <laughs> Great. This is a podcast gone sexual. <laughs> audio, audio. No, it's audio only. So I believe it's it's considered erotica. Oh, excuse me, Robinson. Well, no, I'm not up to borrow my snuff. 
<laughs> well, wait, I'm on a phone. Would that just be considered phone sexual for me? Yes. Mm. You, there was this, there, there was this restaurant. Well, I'm not sure what I would consider it in Wisconsin called Smut and Eggs, where you could go in, watch hardcore pornography, and but they were always serving breakfast, <laughs> like all day breakfast. And apparently, oh. the breakfast was really good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, wait a minute. So you can watch straight up porn and get some breakfast at this place. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's why it now, was called Smut and Eggs. Are there waitresses that are there that can help you if you happen to get a sniffy? Or is uh, that a no? It's, it's like a strip club. You just, you look. I wouldn't know because I've never been, but I would assume women would not go anywhere near a pornography house. Robinson, the, how, how are you going to describe this place to us? And then say that you never went to this place. <laughs> because I saw it in a news article. I saw. Yes. <laughs> no, I a saw. A quote unquote news article called <laughs> Life. I, sw- <laughs> I swear to God, I saw Smun Eggs closes after 10 years of patronage. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a secret brothel, my friend. I'm pretty mm. sure that's how they got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> damn well i mean that's, at least at least it's not the place i went to in uh, seattle where i ate a bag of dips mm. you know what i think i think i know what you're talking about and the bag of food i don't know why but any place where the aesthetic is red and white checkers i assume it tastes delicious <laughs> if the place has a blue and white color scheme it's a little bit better than the ones that are like checkered board. Okay, okay. Mm. Gotta mm. give it a shot. Culver's, man. I'm telling you. you oh, I, more I love Culver's. We got one down here, too. I love that they just have something called a butter burger. <laughs> like, they are immediately letting you know up front that you shouldn't eat this, but you will. Oh, yeah, delicious. we know you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> My God, man. So, I believe Stanley had some questions for you about the Creator Clash. I did. Um, We saw you. Actually, you guys went to the Creator Clash on May 14th, right? So, you sang down there. Yeah. Yeah. How was that? Like, how how did it feel being surrounded by, like, all those people giving, like, your your ode, your angelic, your angelic voice to all those to hear? So, uh, well, in fact, I was in a room. That was like soundproof and shit. Maybe 200 feet in the rain. Practicing. And I was practicing. I was hyping myself up because I was nervous and shit. Because like, as is, being in a crowd of 10,000 people would make anyone nervous. Being, you know, autistic and shit, that just made it so much worse. I was like, fuck. I'm so, so I was literally in that back room. I was practicing. Then I was doing things like, you can do this. You can do this. You can <laughs> sing it in kindergarten. And then uh, I took a break for one fight, which was Justin Minks. Watch that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you start walking out. I walk out, you know, I'm entering. And the first thing that happens is my dad's ring slipped off my finger and I had to pick it up mid-walk. Get to the stage. I go to get up there. My damn, my, my uh, diamond watch they got from my roommate, slash best friend, breaks. Like the latch broke on it. Oh. Um, I don't know if they kept that footage within the actual fight itself. Like, you'd kind of see me bend over twice. Once walking up and once trying to get on stage. Mm. <laughs> All up. eyes on Fatty when he bends over. Hell yeah. Please continue. <laughs> like, I get up. And, you know, you look around. And you think to yourself at first, this is nothing. This is going to be easy as pie. You get up there and the adrenaline kicks in almost immediately. As I'm just looking around. And I'm so hyper-focused. To a point where I'm just looking around. And I'm seeing individual faces in detail. Oh, so like in the ring I was looking this way towards the camera where I was supposed to focus on something to my right there is a couple in a Garfield suit <laughs> and, that makes sense. Around, and I turned around and I saw them and I looked for an extra second at them and I finished looking around and you could see and you could just feel the, the excitement and the energy through the stage you can it was insane and you know when I, when I start with saying I'm already nervous about my voice. I don't like my voice that much. I think, honestly, when it comes to phone calls, I sound way too feminine. 
and I will give you guys a very funny story as to why in that in a moment. But like, um, now you get up there, I start singing, and I just remember my, thinking in my head, don't fuck this up, don't fuck this up, don't fuck this up, don't fuck this up. And I fuck it up. <laughs> and the first time, like, okay, I'll bring myself back, we'll redo this, we got this. Go for the third time, I, I'm fucking up, and I'm just like, fuck, I gotta think of some way to finish this off. It's like, fuck it. Put the mic out there and see what happens. And I, I just gotta be honest, like, the crowd coming in like they did, and they're like, really like being there that helped that really fucking like helped me out there because i was so afraid and just shared because i know the national anthem i know it by heart it's just yeah it's something you see every time right so (laughs) it's literally in that moment everything was so terrifying to look at and you just think to yourself wow i came in ready for this and i realized i'm not ready for this many people <laughs> but like that's just something I gotta work on is with like my self confidence and things like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, like obviously you're a very genuine person, right? So the whole fact of like everyone coming out and being like supportive in that moment really does show kind of a lot about how much, you know, people will help people in moments like yeah. that. It really was one of those moments that really uh reminded me that yes, humanity is still alive. Mm. It's been choking out for a while, and there, there's been a lot of assholes that like run things lately. But that moment reminded, me, yeah, there's still humanity left in this. Mm. Mm. I I wanted to ask something because obviously the people there, like in the crowds in the stands, you can see them, you can hear them, blah blah blah. But there were they're like they're nothing compared to the amount of views that the Creator Clash got. Like, comp- compared to, like, how many people saw it on the internet, a pay-per-view, uh, whatever, over live in person, did that factor in at all? Did you even think about, like, oh, my God, there's a million people behind that camera? Or did that not even come in? So I wasn't even thinking about the camera, to be honest. I was so focused on the crowd. But I remember hearing afterwards, it was something like 90,000 were watching on Twitch, and, like, there was about what, 100,000 just watching on TV? It was insane numbers. It's insanity. Just that moment, I can still feel it. My heart gets pumping every time. I'm just like, did it. You know, I messed it up right. <laughs> nice. And now I have one more question for you. Because I, I have, because in the Creator Clash, um, iDubs made it so similar people fought similar people you know what i mean in terms of content in terms of all that stuff i have an opponent i would like to see you fight but i'm curious who do you think would be a good opponent for you so i'm not like a huge like i'm not a fighter you know i'm more of a pacifist i'd rather try to sell things with words Mm. um i did actually suggest to ian hey like if creator clash wants to have me come out and do a fight next year like Nikocado Avocado was definitely someone I would box or like Boogie 2998. No, I was literally about to say that was my pick. If I had to see you (laughs) fight someone, I want to see you fight Nikocado Avocado. (laughs) That's. But but the issue with that is, being expressed, that the issue with that is trying to get two heavy set guys to fight card is extremely hard because of the health risk and things like that. Mm. And almost. Nobody will sponsor a fight card if anyone over like 360 pounds. Mm. And it's something I can understand because that is a huge health risk. Because it's one thing if, you know, you know, let's, God forbid, but let's say me and my, my buddy's wife get into a fight. If she goes down, she's a lot lighter than me, and she hits her head, she will be relatively okay speaking, as in she just got fucking knocked out, lay out, right? Mm. Yeah. Bigger guy goes down and like literally goes flat on their back. Not only can they smack their head and get a concussion, but with all that weight coming down on their back and their spine, it can cause damage from what I understand. Do that as well. All right, makes and sense. With the bigger guys, getting the blood flow right is also something you gotta monitor. Because you know, it's, it's a high energy sport. It's a lot of movement, a lot of sweating. And a lot of heavier guys like this might not be able to handle that kind of physical output and it's something that i respect the hell out of ian and the boxing community for having and it's something that i'm not going to get upset about because well that just is more motivation for me to lose weight i'm not losing that motivation me was uh brendan herrera turning out to be a huge asshole <laughs> <laughs> but I'm Damn. um 
But hey, at least I got any motivation. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's that's great. All that's, right. Yeah. So so here's what we're gonna do then. Because this is what you gotta do, you gotta be creative. Food fight. We line up two tables, just pie crust and whipped cream. All right? Mm-hmm. Or maybe balls of whipped cream. Do you think do you think this is a good alternative? Yeah, it'd be a lot of fun, yeah. Hell yeah, all right. <laughs> Not the creator clash. The um Go ahead and repeat that. Maybe uh, make some giant whipped cream flamethrowers. <laughs> oh my god. Are they flamethrowers or are they just sprays? Are they like super stokers of whipped cream? <laughs> just a <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we could we could find a way to make whipped cream out of gasoline. Don't worry about it. Leave no, it I to mean, us. Whipped cream into the flamethrower tanks. <laughs> out whipped cream. <laughs> it's got the it's got the napalm li- liquid, the petroleum gel on it too, so you can't get it off you. <laughs> it's not it's not the creator crash. It's the unheard podcast host clash. <laughs> Just hey Robinson, I'd fight you. I'd fight you for dominance. <laughs> oh, absolutely. We have fought before intellectually, but now we bring it to the ring. <laughs> oh, that is an issue because I actually am a pacifist, so that's a that's fucked up. Oh, I'm not. I want to hurt me. <laughs> I'm just a poor baby. <laughs> no, actually, you know what? This is this is like something I just came up with because um. I'm like I consider myself a pacifist too, but I I boxed um I I boxed in high school not in high school but in high school age I wrestled in high school I played American football all that I'm a very aggressive person when it comes to sports but I still consider myself a pacifist so how does a pacifist like see contact sports because I would never fight anybody in real life like if there's a referee and like consent I'm all for it so how do you guys both like look at contact sports like boxing and all that it's a sport man <laughs> it's a sport and a great way to relieve stress oh yeah absolutely it's like how video games are a great way to relieve aggression right? yeah that- but I don't get to hurt anybody <laughs> exactly or like airsoft where i could shoot my friends and not go to jail for murder <laughs> that's great yeah yeah i see because you you posted a lot of airsoft stuff like in the earlier years i'm sure do you still do that no uh, every chance that i get to i try to go i haven't had a lot of chances the past year um mm-hmm. eventually i'm hoping to get a car in the next few months and start taking myself again because it'd be a lot of fun to like go back and do it and this yeah. time just be a hobby yeah because well, there was one video that I watched this morning where it was you getting shot with a grenade launcher, an airsoft grenade yeah. launcher. <laughs> I just, I want to, os- I, I need to isolate that audio, you getting shot with a grenade launcher and just cut off the airsoft part. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Houston Jones, we did, uh, we did 40 mic mic rounds. We did tag rounds. We did impact explosives. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Imp- what's impact explosives in terms of airsoft? Oh, like legit riot control grenades. Mm. Huh. Yeah. And y'all can just shoot those at each other? No, we like took them dead onto our chest. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's the video. It's just like the video for one of them, the thumbnail was just like a picture of, of, of airsoft fatty without a shirt. And the, and the moment the impact of the grenade hit him. <laughs> you know, the uh, night before I did that video with Houston Jones, I got my first tattoo. Mm. What's that first oh. tattoo? And it's right here on my left arm. Let's see if I can't get this in the camera easily here. But oh, it is yeah. Godzilla. That is Shin Godzilla, and going from down, from up to down, it has the abbreviated version of my first name in Japanese. Karisu, which is something I learned when I was taking Japanese in early high school. It's something I remember, and I was kind of like, I want to have something down there that just separates. Okay. And so I was like, fuck it. I was like, I was like let's do it. Let's do it. And um, the person who did the tattoo was actually uh, Joe Kilmeister. Mm. Hell yeah, dude. I, mean, I, I gotta say, I, I appreciate tattoo stuff because, I mean, as Robinson will tell you, I am fucking tatted out from my clavicle down to my feet. So, oh, it, yeah. I, yeah, am, um, I am clean because Mexicans have tattoo culture and my father told me if I get a tattoo without him, he will not love me anymore. 
Oh, God. Well, uh, I'm, I plan to get some more ink here soon. Uh, my next tattoo is going to be a uh, ass tattoo. Ooh, right on the cheek. Gonna, cheek or tramp stamp? Park Kenner toy logo that they would put on their dinosaurs. Mm. You know how you used to get the Jurassic Park toys back in the 90s, early 2000s? They had that JP symbol on their thigh and on their ass. Yeah. Well, I, as a kid growing up, I said, I want to get this tattoo. This is going to be a tattoo on my right ass cheek that I'm going to get one day. Yeah. And so my one, I'm hoping within the next two months to get the cash around and get myself a nice little ass tattoo. Ooh. Damn. I was going to say, that's like, uh, what is it? Is this toy company claiming your ass? <laughs> that's... That sounds like it's this toy company that is like, we own this child. <laughs> Tree advertisement. <laughs> I want to get it nowadays. It's just so when a lady sees it, when she goes down to me, I can go, oh, don't worry, baby. That's just a stamp for the factory. Guaranteed your ass is going to have a good time. Homie, why is she... <laughs> dog, wait a minute. Why is she going down from behind? <laughs> I mean, who doesn't like the fart box with that every once in a while? Jesus yeah. Christ, my man. <laughs> Robinson, you've been living in Mormon land too long. <laughs> what do you mean Mormon land? I know what goes on down there. I would never subject a woman to that. <laughs> yeah, so you've never uh, eaten a little ass pork? Mm. Maybe by no. accident. <laughs> hey, I mean, what is it? A fun little history fact, because I'm a, I'm a dick like that, where I have to insert history. Did y'all know that... Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart wrote a song called Leck mich on Ash, which just means like kiss my ass in German. Ooh. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, he did. Link to that shit. It's like listen to that. <laughs> yeah, because it's because uh, one of the things that you have to understand is that like Mozart was super into dirty jokes. Like he and his family would compose music and then compose it to like fart sounds. Or that <laughs> <kind of shit. laughs> <laughs> Just cool. a That's a good Here, another little dirty fact about stuff. Mm -hmm. The um, finger originally didn't mean fuck you. Yeah. It means, ultimately, I'm going to fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to fuck you. I'm going to rape you. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I wouldn't say this that for. Actually, not. Mm -hmm. Pretty much meant that during Roman times. It literally meant, you know, I'm going to fuck you. <laughs> Not fuck you. Ah, yeah. Good. Damn. But yeah, I sent you. I sent you the the link. It's called Lek Mission Ash in B Major. <laughs> in B major. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet it was. I bet he had a major B. <laughs> I know, dude. Like, um. Oh, man. Like, so you were in Seattle. I actually just came back from uh, my trip in Alaska. And we stopped in Seattle. We took a little time there. We spent a night and that kind of stuff. Because my sister actually got married in Seattle a couple years ago. Well, I say a couple. It's like back in 2012, right? So, fuck me. But, um, so what was your favorite part about going to Seattle? That's a good question. I didn't really do too, too much while out there. It was, uh, I was only there for like a night or two. First okay. night, I'm lost to shit. Okay, I guess I do have a favorite part. I love the fact that though people will live there and be locals, they don't know how the fuck to get to places. Because, <laughs> like, I get off the fucking trail ride from the, from the airport trying to find my hotel. I ask one person, they say, oh, that hotel is all the way down here, four blocks down. I walk about four blocks, and some I, I'm lost, don't not see anything. I ask him, I was like, no, sir, you live here? He's like, yeah. I said, I'm looking to get to this hotel on this street. How do we get there? He goes, oh, you're going to take and go the other direction about five blocks. For about an hour and a half, I was walking around. It's about 90 degrees out, hotter than fuck. And, um, you know, it seems like everyone there lived there that I spoke to, but didn't know where the fuck they were going. And what so if it was just a bunch of people who were fucking with you? Just like, yeah, dude, you go that way. <laughs> Pretty much. But I had a fan of mine who saw me while I was walking. He goes, you're a fan. He was like, yeah. I said, dude, oh, my God. He was like, dude. I, get a selfie. I, was like, I got a selfie with him. I was like, dude, I'm trying to find my fuck way in this hotel. I'm exhausted. I'm about to collapse. Where the fuck is this place? He goes, follow me. Takes me up to the exact road and says, go down three blocks right there. You can't miss it. Walk up. I see it. I'm like, think I'm walking. 
mind you, not only are they they, they live there, the cool spot where exactly things are. Yeah. But they are also extremely kind. Because mm-hmm. I come there, I'm dehydrated. I've been walking around in 90 degree heat for an hour and a half, nonstop. My feet are blistered over. And really? I come in, I'm like, hey, I got a reservation. This is the name. And the lady like gets, gets me the keys. She goes, you okay? I was like, yeah, I just got off the plane and I got completely lost. I don't have service out here. So I was kind of relying on people and I got ran around the ringer for pest. She goes, have you had anything to drink recently? I said, no, I really haven't. She goes, here, let me get you a couple of bottles of water to take up with you, man. You, you need something to drink. Like, she could see I was about fucking dropping. Handed yeah. me, like, four water bottles. She's like, you don't got to worry about a thing. Just go up, relax. All the rooms are up to 60s. I get in there. Room's perfect. I start guzzling some water. So, I guess the, my favorite part of Seattle in Long, in, Long, in Long Speech is people are clueless where to go. But they got some of the biggest and kind of starts for me. Yeah. I, that's And that's great, right? That you can be like that within a place that you don't really know. Because it is it is really kind of horrifying to go to another place and you don't know anyone there. Especially when you're going all the fuck alone. Damn. Why are you going alone? Why are you going up there? You, go, you uh, didn't bring didn't, anyone with you? I didn't Weird. have the money to get my... Um... And I couldn't get my I couldn't get my best friend a ticket with me, otherwise I would have. But um, mm. yeah, I, just, I, I went alone, which isn't the smartest thing to do these days. But I'm still trying to go alone. <laughs> yeah. Hey, dude. Yeah. So you went up there, and I noticed that you said that you were doing a bunch of like weed review channels. And one of the newest yeah. ones that you did is that you did the the dab, right? You did like a some medical grade dab in Michigan. I actually did not know that Michigan had a recreational and medical marijuana. So they that was interesting. Recreational about 2019, 2018, okay. 2018 recreational, um, but it was just medical for a very long time. I've had my medical. I was 18 years old, mm. and. Uh, <laughs> at first, I wanted to cuss my mom out over it, but at the same time, I was grateful because uh, originally I was going to get her a medical card. She canceled. My 18th birthday, she tells me, get in the car. We got to go get your birthday present. I got you something special. Mm. Start driving up to Calvin's room. I go, Mom, what, what, what is this gift that you're talking about? We, we, we need to like get home eventually, take care of your things. She goes, no, no, no. Don't worry about it. Look up this address and get me there. And it was like a weird like office area. And I, I put two and two together after we get there, and I realized, oh, this is the marijuana car clinic, isn't it? She goes, yeah. I said, okay, we're getting this taken care of for you, and we're going to get my gift. She goes, gift. Yeah. I said, what do you mean? She goes, I'm getting you your medical marijuana card, and you're not going to argue with me. I said, what the fuck do you mean, mother? Yo. <laughs> or the what the fuck do you mean? She goes, no, Christopher, you're younger than me, you have more life than me, and you're not sick like me. You get pulled over, you're gonna get time and you're gonna get in trouble. I'd rather you have your card because if I get in trouble, what are they gonna do to a cancer patient? Yeah. I will never ever forget that kindness of her. Just the fact that she was like, You don't need to worry about you don't need to worry about it because I'm gonna be okay. You will need to be okay too. Right. Right. And Man. I'll never forget that. Yeah. I mean that's also insane to me because uh, my parents are Irish, right? So they would fucking never do that. Like they would, they would crucify me if I actually like went did something like that. So, which is funny, because we went to Oregon, right? And Oregon also has recreational marijuana, and because I'm a big rule follower, and I'm like, if it's legal at that place, fuck it, let's go. So yeah. we, yeah, you understand the whole idea. So we went in. And, you know, the place had that security guard and the, like, blocked door and that kind of thing. And I was just like, fuck, what am I doing? And then the guy comes up. He's like, so what do you want? I'm like, well, we're going hiking, right? Do you have anything for that? He's like, oh, dude, I got the best shit for this. And he gave me a chocolate bar that you eat one before you go on a hike. And I was like, holy shit, the, the trees were so green. The waterfalls were so beautiful. Like, I thought yeah. you were about to say he gave me a can of Monster Energy, and inside was a bunch of sage. <laughs> <laughs> but the yeah. not if you do cannabis right. That's what it will do for you. Like, if, yeah. if you're 
taking cannabis medically or you're doing it for a specific reason. It'll do things like that. It just makes yeah. things more. I mean, also good. It's just I'm. Uh, I guess I am an advocate for like decriminalization because historically speaking, making something illegal will not make people want to stop doing it. So, thank, you. Thank, you. thank, thank, oh my God, thank you. Someone yeah. finally says it the way it is. Yeah, I mean, like take it like this, right? If we started like going, hey, machetes are killing a lot of people. Let's outlaw machetes. Guess what's going to happen? People are going to buy fucking machetes. And they're going to keep it with them. It's like it's like in Paper Mario Color, color Splash. I can't <laughs> outlaw straws because then only outlaws will have straws. In that, <laughs> ga- in that game, you can use straws to kill people. It was another weird Mario game. <laughs> Wait, there's a Mario game where you can kill people with a straw? There's a Mario game where a main character fucking dies and never comes back. Bro. You mean, you mean Bobby the bob Don't say his name. <laughs> he makes me sad. Fuck. Yeah, man. Uh, hey. But here, here's something I wanted to ask. Because um, in Utah, uh, weed is everywhere, even though it's technically illegal. It's something that can be got, you can get medically, blah, 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 all that. And like I said, every time I've tried it, because I always have pothead friends, right? I go to a college, I go to university, and every time I try it, I just get sleepy, right? That's it. Do you think it's just bad strains, bad grass, or is it just not for me? I want to hear from a professional. <laughs> to be honest, it could end up not being for you. Hmm. Because we don't know the strands that you are smoking when you do, I can't Because it could be very, it could very well be that you're just ended up smoking a lot of indica dominant strands that are known to get you lazy and sleepy. And I know they're trying to to make that the phrasing sativa indica outdated. In reality, it's an umbrella term that just kind of encumbers, okay, this bud's more relaxing, this bud will expire. But if you've done it a couple of different times, I can almost guarantee you've had a chance to try sativas and hybrids. And if it really is just something that consistently makes you tired, it might not be the thing for you because cannabis is going to affect everybody differently. There is actual cannabinoid receptors in our brain. We are designed to take that in. It's just some of our receptors don't work in the way that a lot of others work. See, that's a lot smarter than what these potheads have to say other than, I don't know, man, try again. (laughs) marijuana <laughs> patient and they will tell you the truth 100 percent of the time Ooh, all yeah, right dude. so what i'm hearing is i need to try cocaine all right thank you fatty <laughs> i'll let the police know <laughs> yeah i think you're going the opposite way my guy if you're gonna be doing coke you're gonna be doing that booger sugar you're gonna be doing some uh you know like shit this place is too dirty i gotta fucking clean everything <laughs> he's gonna be in the house while cleaning his car while vacuuming the baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Where'd I get this baby from? Well, I should be responsible and raise it as my own instead of giving it back to the police. <laughs> Dude, just leave it at the fire st- firehouse, right? They'll they'll take care of it. <laughs> what's, what's with the baby at the fire station? What are they going to do? <laughs> um, They're going to contact <laughs> child services. Child foster care system. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that makes more sense. Wait, 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 why can't... Okay, I guess I don't want to contact them myself and be like, Hi, uh, I, I was at your place and I couldn't find the baby drop-off area like they have at the library for books. <laughs> you can be surprised there are some police stations out there in the U.S. that do have those. Oh, shit. Hey. It's hey. sad. It is, it is really sad, but, you so, know... The- um, there's um a couple of things I wanted to ask you because I had no idea who you were until like a month ago. Where on this podcast, meanwhile, you were... I knew about you for like fucking years. So <laughs> <laughs> because on this podcast, um, Stanley brought up the Full Force documentary, and he's like, "You have to watch this." So I did, yeah. right? And um. So, before the Full Force documentary, you did have um, a bit of a following, and it was just you and your friends farting around, doing your own thing, doing what's fun, right? Like, when everybody brings up the video where, like, lightsaber duel, epic fail, watch to the end, where you trip over a bucket. <laughs> so It I, wasn't. I fell over. 
It's not the vacuum either. It was the statue because I broke the bear statue's foot. <laughs> so, I owned it. I wish I still had my old house because I would just take you guys out and show you. But I literally broke the foot off, the right foot off the bear. And oh. uh, we kept that foot right next to the statue for as long as we had it before I lost the house. Because you're like, we're not going to throw that piece of the rock away and just throw a statue. We fuck that. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, I really busted a reinforced concrete foot on the bear, and that's what made me fall. That's the power, that's the power, the of, the power of the airsoft. You well, have the force with you, fatty. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, how did it feel like, uh, because you were already probably accustomed to some sort of internet fame, and I say internet fame lightly because it can't be compared to, like, people in real life. So yeah. how did it, how was it going from this semi-known, unknown entity to becoming, like, like what, o over 100,000 subscribers overnight? Pretty much, yeah. No, so it was kind of insane because leading up to the week to my 21st birthday, which is when I hit 100,000, I hit 100,000 on my 21st birthday. It was the same day the YouTube HQ shooting happened in, uh, I think it was Arizona or Texas. Yeah. I remember the whole week leading up to that, I was like, oh my God, I'm like growing quick. And at first, you no, know, Monday I'm hitting, you know, 10, 15K. Tuesday I'm hitting nearly 30K. And I'm, I remember looking at my, with, dude, what the fuck? We're growing so fast. He goes, yeah, man, people are like, you shit. You know, by fucking Thursday, Friday, we're already sitting at 70K subs. And I'm sitting there thinking, what, wait, what the fuck? And then, of course, uh, my 21st birthday runs around. And of course, we end up hitting that 100K marker. And uh, I get a call from, I'm not get a call, but I got a message from Ian not too long after that. And uh, yeah, that very next birthday, about a week later, he came out. We did the documentary. But he contacted me. That would have been three or four months after I hit 100K. He had hit me up. Said, hey, I'd like to do a video with you, documentary. I'm interested. And at first, I was like, oh, okay, this is not real. Went and verified it, and it was real. I was like, yeah, let's do this. Let's have fun, you know? And literally, April 8th, he came out and filmed that. I will mm. never, I'll never forget that. Yeah, I mean, it's such a good documentary. It's actually one of the videos that, like, Savannah and I will put on and watch. Just like even in the background, we still laugh at some of the moments too. It was what gets me is a lot of those moments that were mean from that video are still making the rounds to this day. Mm -hmm. That video from that, that from the Hitman, that still makes its rounds. The fall still makes its rounds. Mm -hmm. um, it's insane to see, and to this day, I, I, hands down, every time I see Ian, I thank him because even though. I was climbing up and getting near that 100,000 marker beforehand. When he did that work with me and he did that video, whoo, he really set me up on an amazing career that's really helped save my life in multiple forms. Yeah, man. Like, Ian does seem like a pretty nice person. Obviously, I don't know him because I'm just some fucking person in Texas, but, you know, like, do you, do you guys still keep in, like, contact a lot or what? We're not messing with each other, like, every day. But every so often we'll hit each other up and chat. Um, every so often he'll hit me up to do stuff. Like uh, when Creator Clash happened, it was like three or four days after I got home from my second Cali trip. He had hit me up. He was like, yo, you know that boxing fight I have coming up, right? I was like, yeah. He goes, I need someone that's willing to do the national anthem. Would you be willing to do it? And like, I had, I had a few things that I was interested in taking on out here. There was like a weed event that was coming up and I wanted to come work it. But I was like, eh, no, no, no. Daddy, uh, Daddy, I don't need you to come out to Florida for a bit. So. <laughs> when the call is made, you answer. <laughs> oh, yes. When he, when he says, yo, Chris, can you come out and help me? I will do every last thing I can to make sure that'll happen. And if I can't personally do it, I will find someone that will be willing to do it. Hell yeah. That's some loyalty, my guy. I got to say, it's really admirable. <laughs> Exactly, and I'm not blindly loyal. I'm not going to sit there and, like, make a mistake. You get someone killed by X or something. I'm not going to sit there and defend his ass. I'm like, yeah, you got to accept your responsibility. But I know that Ian, like, he doesn't bullshit. If he says, yo, you, you can do this, or I want you to do this, 
Usually me and Jack. You should. You do that. That's awesome, man. Like, I'm I'm actually like really happy that like that kind of really helped get a get a lot going for you. No, seriously. And then the thing is, is like his kindness, like, isn't even just like business wise, right? The the night of the the creator clash, when I messed up, I went with the first shuttle with the creators back to the hotel. It's really embarrassed. Uh, veterans, veterans would be pissed with me that I fucked it up so badly. I'm like. <laughs> So I, I was nervous as shit afterwards. I, I remember immediately getting back to the hotel room. I was texting Ian. I said, Ian, my man, I'm so sorry that I messed it up so badly. I was like, I did not mean to go up there and freeze. And I just, I was like, Ian, I'm so sorry. He texted me, he goes, Chris, what the hell are you going on about? That was the best part of the evening. Like, people loved it. You don't got to worry about it, man. Just enjoy your night. And like, at first, I was really, like, embarrassed. I didn't, I didn't hear him out clearly. And I remember I, I flew home. I was still feeling bad for the first couple of days. My roommate slash my best friend, Cookie, said, dude, reread what Ian said, dude. He's not upset with you one bit. And, like, to this day, I go back and I look at that. And I'm just like, you could do this. Yeah. If things that highly of you, you can do shit. Yeah, man. Like, that's the that's. That's what made it so good about the entire experience, right? Is that this is not run by professional media companies. This is a genuine event ran by people who, who want to show something. And it's an actual influencer boxing event, unlike Jake Paul and his bullshit. I event. swear to God, the, the Floyd Mayweather <laughs> pissed me off so much. And I have my conspiracy theory about that. Like, right. Well, they're, what is- they're laughing all the way to the bank, my guy. That's the... Exactly. <laughs> Look at every fight they've won. It's very clearly they bought the wins. Bro, I what I loved about the Floyd Mayweather one is Paul was knocked out and Floyd held him up. <laughs> <laughs> like it, that, that's the way I that's the way like that's the way like my grandma hugs me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just me towering over her and her trying to keep her balance. <laughs> <laughs> so, one thing I wanted to ask, because everybody knows that every good thing comes with bad things, and I saw a couple of videos, like, talking about, where's Fatty, Fatty and Just Drama, blah, blah, blah. So, afterwards, after everything happened, the dust settled, um, you got in it with a bad manager, as I'm to believe it, named Josh, right? Yeah, I don't want to go too, too much into detail because it was really a whole situation and a half. Oh, that's fine. What I wanted to ask... Oh, go ahead. Tried to sense, try to apologize for everything. But um, it was a whole shitty situation where, like, I was locked out of my accounts. Things been uh, Could you repeat that? You were breaking up. That, that He got involved around December 2019. Um, this was just a few months after my mama passed away. I was homeless. I came to the dispensary. He wanted to help me out. And he's someone that, like, I knew, but not super well. Someone I had spoken to in the past. He was like, yo, let me help. At the time, like, it was a very shit situation. But I was in such a mentally bad spot that I wasn't really taking steps to make sure the situation didn't get shitty. There were lines that I should have drawn and planted my feet down on a long time throughout that whole managerial relationship with him and it did it became and I'm, I'm gonna be blunt with it it became very verbally and emotionally abusive there was like one or two times where it did get like physical from his end he pushed me like i said since since then he has tried to reach out and apologize like, it, it's whatever he's he's showing me he's maturing seeing he's got what he's done but like it was it was a whole shit show situation. A lot. Mm. Yeah, and that, it, that being sucks, blunt, right? what happened? And there's footage of it that proves it. There's you know Twitch streams that were saved where he tried to take the phone from me and stuff. And mm. it was so, a really rough. Situation, but about Valentine's Day, 2020 ish, I finally was able to get away after about a year, year and a half. I'm now out of that situation, thankfully, and I'm still out of it to this day. And it just it's it's a situation where if I would have drawn some lines and he would have kept going, that's when I should have been like, no. But because I was in such a mentally vulnerable place, I didn't stand up for him. I didn't, you know, plant my feet down when I should have and I let myself get pushed around and bullied and you know, at yeah. the end of the part of that part of that chunk of time is my own fault. 
And I've kind of hence learned to kind of try to move past it because it's not worth focusing on negative stuff. Especially yeah. with so much negativity in the world. Yeah, because what I wanted to ask you about it was that um, that's something that a lot of people can get themselves into without even knowing it. Just because, as you said, emotionally vulnerable. Because um, I remember seeing your, when your mother passed, you dropped a freestyle about it, right? And yeah. that And that was um, something that really, like, got to me because it's a very emotional moment, right? Uh, something that can break people, something that brings people down, that's very hard to get over. And you expressed yourself in one of the most passionate ways I can imagine. Like, it was wild watching that. And Dude, I- it's insane because after she passed away, I lost my home. I had to rehome almost every cat. I, I, had tr- I had to trust my cousin to rehome my dog because he was one forcing me out of my home. And uh, I come to find out later that my cousin had my dog put down when she was only a four-year-old St. Martin. Yeah, Jesus. what the fuck? Yeah, okay. I'm still pissed about that. Yeah. His mother told me and promised me that she was going to go to a family who could have like, really appreciated her and had a kid who was autistic and would have loved her. He really fucking sold me on this family. Told me that one of my aunts knew the person personally. My aunt even fucking pushed it when I called her about it. I had to find out through an ex-friend of mine. They were, like, pissed with me one day. And they show, yeah, and you know your fucking cousin killed your dog, right? And I was like, what? He goes, I had to put down. Sorry. Dude, Dude, that's so fucked. I'm so sorry, I mean, And especially you were going through grief at the time. So, I mean, the word's going to express, like, I hope you understand that, like, I really do have a lot of empathy for you. And I mean, like, that that sucks, but I'm glad that you're finding your new, healthier outlet and you've kind of built up from that. Exactly. And the, the only thing that gets me upset about the situation anymore, cause at, the, at the end of the day, the house is a complete shit show. I had no skills at the time to be able to fix it. I didn't have the money to. The literal kitchen shield the day before I moved out fell on top of me. Oh, shit. Okay. So, like, it, it wasn't a good thing that I got the fuck out of there when I did. But, like, the one, the only thing that makes me upset about that situation these days is my cousin sat there, told his fans that he was going to give me a cut of whatever he made from selling the house because it was supposed to be the right thing to do, and never did. And he sold it. Yeah, sent sold that house and never saw a penny. Damn. So that's some steezy bullshit. What what I wanted to end it on is that um that's something that you got out of, right? Like this could have eas that that's something that a lot of people don't know how to get out of, how to get find the strength to get out. And I wanted to ask you what you think was the big turning point that helped you get out. Now, you already told us what could have um, been done to prevent it, which is drawing lines, right? Making boundaries. Hey, you can't do this. You can't do that. But um, well, once you're in there, what what do you think would have been the best option for you to get out? What ultimately got you out? So this is what had happened. And I can never speak for everyone because each individual is going to have something else that helps that kind of snap in for them that they don't deserve to be treated like that. So what had happened for me was the first time I was out in California was when I was doing, uh, it was Beefy Boys. It was hanging with Charlie's for the first And the initial thing that really pushed me to understand the situation fully was when I was in the car with, it was Chad and Charlie's. Brooks, Blake, I believe there was one other person in the car that can't remember how. When we were riding in the car, we were going to one of their buddies' house to play some VR, and I got a call from the manager at the time. And this guy was screaming on the phone to me so loud that everyone in the car could hear it without it being on speaker. I had the volume on low, and I kept whispering, like, dude, you gotta calm down. Like, everyone in this car right now looking at me. I'm chill. And eventually, Brooks looked at me, he turns around because he's in the front seat, he goes, Chris? Put that on speaker. And I put it on speaker, and I guess Josh didn't know to put it on speaker. I talked to him, and he was fucking losing his shit with me. And eventually, like, Brooks is giving me the symbol of, hang the fuck up. And that's when I hung up, and him, Churdley's, uh, and then the other guy that had with us, they all sat down and were like, dude, you should not be getting treated like that. You, do n- you should never be getting talked to like that by your manager. 
he goes, what the fuck? He's like, what? You, you just let talk to you like that. I said, well, yeah. He says that manager should be treating their plumbing. He goes, oh, my God. He really said, oh, my God. That is not how he should be treating you. And it, 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 took, it took a whole group of people who had already hit that multi-million mark to be like, yo, that's not how you're supposed to be treated. That's not how this is supposed to work. And of course, you know, he kept calling and calling and calling back. And eventually they said, just turn your phone off, dude. And they said, don't be afraid of this little kid because he's got nothing on you. Hmm. The little contract he has is nothing. They said straight up, you need to you need to cut ties this game. And at first, I was listening to them. And I just enjoyed my time out there. Came home, and I kind of sat on it for a few months. And eventually, there was a blowout between me and Josh. I can't remember the exacts of the argument, but it got it was the only other time he had put his hands on me. He pushed me down. I was really pissed. I told him I'm about to call the police, and I had I had called the police. They came out, spoke with him, got him to leave. They left. He came back start streaming again and eventually he ends up leaving and I was sitting there kind of thinking to myself and I was scared and I remember looking back at my text messages and seeing Brooks had messaged me a few times Make sure it's right. and I realized wait a minute this isn't right I shouldn't be sitting here with a zero dollar bank account meanwhile Josh is buying his time which means you know, if you guys want to know the reason I'm so fucking poor right now his dude took 90% of my income throughout that time. Get the fuck out of here. Seriously? What the fuck? Pocketing money from gigs that I didn't even know I had. Yo. Man. Yeah. When I say it was a fuck situation, like, it wasn't until that night after he completely blew up on me, put his hands on me. He had literally brought another content creator by the name of Jay Munchow, which I hope he's doing all right. I got no beef with him. But, like, he had Jay Munchow come out. And originally, Jay Much was going to come out for a weekend. And then he ended up pretty much moving in with me for a few months. Mm. And uh, I remember that night is when one of the nights where Jay Much was there. And I remember I just kind of was like, I'm done. I'm done. I got a call. I put a call in to my buddy Cookie. And I remember saying, Cookie, dude, you got to help me out here, man. I am freaking out. I have to get moved out in three days out of this apartment. And Josh is fucking doing all this. I explained it to him. And Cookie's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean this is happening? I said, you guys don't know this because I'm hiding it. This shit's been happening in the background and stuff. He ended up saying, yo, you're coming and moving with me. Like, pack your shit. Get up here. Moving in with me for now. Like, you, th this, is, this isn't cool one bit. And it was just that initial thought of, like, Chardley says I don't deserve this. What the fuck am I doing sitting here taking? Yeah. And then finally, I just thought I'll reach out to Cookie. He's the one person I feel like I can trust right now to call, fix the situation. I called him up. And it just, it was the right person to call because that same night, we had made plans for me to drive up to him. Now we got snowed in for a whole day past my contracted lease. But after that day, we took right off, came up, and moved in with him. And we ended up getting a lawyer involved to deal with the Josh situation. Separated. I got some of my stuff back from him. My PC that was with him is at the time me and my roommate Aaron were having a little bit of tiff. I didn't want my PC destroyed. Left it with Josh and like when I got it back, it was in pieces and it was completely destroyed. Mm. I only got about half my shit back from him. And again, it is what it is. He's reached out to me since past year mm. has tried to apologize and, and, and very clearly displays that over time he's realized just how bad it was and what he was doing but at the same time like I'm not going to sit here and baby him and sit there and be you know soft with explaining what had happened and what had happened was complete abuse complete and utter like abuse and something that had that he's you know grown up from and learned but at the same time like I'm not gonna I'm I'm gonna be open to an extent about this shit that's happened to me. Because if I don't, people are just gonna keep getting upset and upset and upset and like I haven't opened up to my fans about the money thing, right? This is like my first time and honestly, I'm to a point again where I, I just don't give a shit. I've been fucked yeah. over so I don't care. This guy can get mad all he wants. I'm being honest. Yeah. Like he bought his mom's house, 
got his uh, fucking BMW 350i completely prepared. Like, it's ridiculous. Mm. And like I said, it was just that one night where something in me finally snapped in place and said, this ain't right. Mm. If anyone's out there right now, it doesn't matter if you do content, it doesn't matter if you're a superstar in Hollywood, it doesn't matter if you're a doctor, a lawyer, a cop, if you are going through a situation where you're being abused, get the fuck out. I know what it's like to sit there and think, oh, this is good, this is normal, they care about me, they love me, oh, this is normal, this is a boss first. That's not how it's supposed to be. We're all fucking human beings. We are all slabs of meat on the planet with blood flowing through us. And the only thing that differentiates us from us from dirt is we have conscious thought and effort. Mm -hmm. And it's sad that there are people out there these days that prey on people who don't have the strongest thoughts of effort. We don't have like the strongest mindset, like myself. That's it. I didn't have a good mindset, and I was already down on the press desk. And there are people out there who are going to feel that way. It's not okay. Yeah. If you feel like you're being abused in a situation, reach out for some help. Mm. I'm telling you right now, you could be saving your own life. That's yeah. not why. Hell yeah, man! More power to you. I got to give you massive respect, my guy. Yeah, man. I, I try to keep every... There's a whole reason I try to keep good vibes in my channels. I know what yeah. it's like. I know what it's like to be so low that you feel like you have no hope in hell. Mm. I know what that's like to be at your absolute lowest. I've lived in a van with literally no rear window and a tape-on passenger sliding door in the middle of a month-long winter blizzard in Michigan. I've had no blankets at that time. I was using trash bags for uh, pillows. And I survived that. And the whole reason I survived that is because the fans, whenever I would go live during the day in the van, always gave me some form of hope. And I want to try to be that light for someone. Just sharing what I enjoy. Talking with people. Smoking up and talking with people on the streams. Mm -hmm. You know, there are plenty of times, and this is what gets me about Twitch with them permanently ban me. There are plenty of notable times on Twitch I have been live and like a really good example. So we had a young man one time in Twitch who'd been roughly December, 2020. I was live. We had a young man that made a donation. He said something along the lines of fatty. I, I, I hope you're doing good, man. I hope you keep strong, but I can't do this anymore. I've been going through so much shit lately in life. And I just, I don't have any more hope. I've been sitting here popping pills for like the past 30 minutes and like, I'm trying to just finally leave this world. And I wanted to leave you my last bit of money because like, I'm not, I can't do this anymore. I stopped my fucking whole street. I said, now hold the fuck up. Everyone, we got to stop for a moment. Dude, put the fucking pill. Like, we had a one on one with this dude through the chat. And I eventually got him to agree to reach out for some help. He went to the hospital. So, from what I, from what I have heard from him, which I haven't heard in a good long time because Switch banned me and I can't check my DMs. Mm hmm. From what I understand, he had, that night, he had gotten off stream, went to the hospital to have his stomach pumped, and he had gotten a lot of help. From what I understand now, he's got like a job and he's enjoying life a little bit. And like I said, I, I know what it's like, and that's why when I see something like that in my chats, I try to stop immediately to address it, because I've, I've been to that point. I've been at that point where it fe I felt so alone and, and so hopeless that it just it felt like the better option. And... I got lucky. I had people in my life who, you know, pulled me last second and, you know, saved me from, you know, because I'd, I'd been close to death doing it. There have been times where I've been close and my mother just barely comes down in time to cut me down. And there was a few times where I finally started seeing that this is not what you want. Yeah. You don't want to die until it's your time. Yeah. You know, you really don't. Because what's on the other side, you're going to have to answer to Hmm. And yeah, and what is it? I think there's like a, a, a lyric from a song that kind of stuck with me. It was like, uh, there are plenty of people um, to take the gun. You don't need to jump your turn or something like that. So it's... it's it hurts yeah. because people out there who feel that way, who genuinely don't have the resources to reach out or don't have the ability to get help. Yeah. And it hurts because like, that's something we shouldn't have. To this day, you really should. Mm. Well, 
You know, the good thing is, man, is that you have a bunch of fans who love you and want the best for you. And I think that's pretty awesome to have, like, because they're always going to be, like, mean comments and shit, right? Yeah. But at least you got, like, the genuine people out there that really just want you to kind of thrive in this environment. So, I, you know. That's bad things like the trail riding series coming up. You know, I try to make channel, you know, we make content of what I enjoy. If yeah. I'm in Beyblades, we'll make Beyblades for a video, you know? Yeah. All about sharing that experience. Yeah. Well, man, I got to tell you that um, I have to say that one of um, my, because my wife's a really big fan, right? And yeah. she really loves your uh, West Virginia cover that Mo she has. Mama. It. Yeah. She's like, she saved it on her favorite playlist, right? So she's got, she's got a, she got a lot of love for that one. So, you know, even two, two people you don't fucking know are in Texas that, you know, fucking love the shit out of you. So we want you to just keep on grinding, man. Keep on testing that weed, and let's see how that trail video goes. I want to see. I want to see some good shit out of that. <laughs> Hell yeah! Here in the next about two to three weeks, we should be having the bike to start that up. So. Fuck yeah, yeah, dude! Hell yeah! Yeah. Well, Robinson, man, you got any more? One more questions? I <laughs> know uh, because um, I really resonated with um, the do what you want to do because that's how this podcast got started. Me and Stanley, we've been good friends for a while, right? Like. Um, we met in high school, right? Mm. Um, and then I moved out to Utah, but we kept in touch. And we just kept talking for hours on Discord over, like, Overwatch or something. And one day he's like, hey, I finally finished doctorate school. You want to start a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, he's, he's, a, he's like a, histor like a full-on historian. Yeah, I actually had some of my work published. So. He's had his work published. <laughs> Where at? It. Oh, it's uh, it's published in you know the like in high school and college when you like search articles for history and that kind of stuff like the AMSCO or the UNESCO website. Yeah, uh, my yeah. school published that to that website. So, oh hell yeah, I'll published historian. Yeah, it's about Texas Germans and because apparently Germany wanted to colonize Texas and Texas was like yeah whatever sure. So <laughs> that was kind of my thing but it's really more about like how germans were not seen as white people so that's the <laughs> yeah it's interesting i would want to i would probably look that up and read about it i've i've always been interested in learning about history and things like that well you won't have to pay a thing if you want it i'll fucking email it to you <laughs> that's the that's the good news right because that's again i don't think you should pay for information like that right information is fucking awesome so <laughs> yeah but hey man this has been a fucking great conversation. Even though you're technically in our head cannon in hell with us right now, this has been a pretty good, <laughs> pretty good convo. It's been it's been such a pleasure, to Chris. Like no joke, man. Mm -hmm. It's been fantastic. Really loved having you on here. Oh yeah, it's been an amazing time. I'm glad I was able to come chat with you guys and you know, spend a little time just talking. Hell yeah. yeah. So, is there anything that you want to shout out? You said you got your trail thing coming up. You're doing weed reviews. You're doing Beyblades. Uh, here's what you should do. I just had this idea. You can have it for free. Make one blade. Wait, make one Beyblade like flint. The other one steel. Put weed in the middle. Just have them try to spark some weed off. Yeah. And you just put a bag over it and smoke it. <laughs> yes, that one's free from me. You can have that. No charge. Well, hey, maybe I'll try and set that up. But uh, nah, we've we've got the we got the live streams that we're doing uh, daily over on YouTube. We've got the trail riding content that should be coming out. I've, I've got a person right now that's going to be selling me a working uh, moped for like thirty bucks. Or not, not thirty. They're going to be selling me a working moped for about two fifty. I just got to get them on over the next two to three weeks, and he's going to sell that to me, which will get the trail riding content started and going. And then we've got uh, a slot that we've been working on for a long time and meeting to get that finished up. I just have not had the time lately to get into the studio, mainly because my studio guy is sick with COVID right now. So. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. On that. But there's mm. the song Down the Bed, uh, Down the Bed, Down the River and a Bed of Roses. That's uh, yeah. a whole 
within the next, I want to say, month. Should be good. Um, other than that, no, we, got, we don't got too, too much. Uh, I am also getting some money around to get some merch designed up for us. We got some new merch coming out. It's a lot of, like, it's not set date stuff, but we got stuff coming out over time that's just going to really bring it. Yeah, some, yeah, yeah. something for the fatty nerds to be looking out for. Something to be excited about. To have a, your face on their bodies. <laughs> By so, the way, I just I want to say something real quick. Of like, in your in one of your cooking videos, you like grab a bunch of stuff and you go. As bad, he always says, "Clean up after yourself." Whenever I'm cl doing the dishes, I actually say that in my head. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> That's uh. It has made its way into the lexicon of our household. So, so it, and real quick, and at my first high school, one of the few classes I actually loved, I actually did leave a uh, wording like that. Um, I guess just TLDR real quick since we're at the end here. But uh, took a theater class, and I remember I was giving a critique of someone that I really enjoyed their like little skit, and I was like, you know what, you went up there like Goku. And you balls eat it. And I remember in my head thinking, oh, that's cringy. Nature is like, that's honestly the perfect way to explain that because the dude's stuff was really good. Like, like dude was really freaking good. Like, really mm. part mm. And I remember the teacher that in his lexicon. And from what I hear to this day, he still uses that word uh, to explain just an overly great performance, you know? Hell yeah. yeah. No, that's well, like man, the like, are if you ever want to have. If you want to have a nerdy debate, we'll have you back on the podcast. We'll fucking debate some shit. No, I won't. I, I just like bullshitting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more of the argumentative type, so. We'll have, we'll have a good old time. We'll be able to have fun. I've I got lots of stuff I'm into, so if you guys ever want to talk about, you know, scientific stuff, historical stuff, I'm always down for it, man. Hell yeah. So I mean, you gotta I can tell you about Soapy Smith. But that's a different time. Ooh. So, yeah. Soapy. So, yeah. real quick, where can people find you? Like, what what are your ads? What what's your YouTube? What's your Twitch? What's your live stream? So my Twitch is permanently banned at the moment. Twitch, fucking look at my unban request. Uh, <laughs> but on YouTube, you can find me on the Arizona Fatty, Fatty, A I R S O F T F A T T Y. Just that classical spelling. And then you've got Airsoft Fatty, the Instagram, which we just recently hit 200k on, so fuck yeah. And then a little oh, yeah. tip for the people that are watching for the YouTube, when I hit 500,000, I will be going bald, and I'm not getting a haircut till I do. You've heard it here oh, first, yeah. first. Maybe not here first. I'm gonna, <laughs> no, I'm saying that. I'm saying that. Exclusive information from Airsoft Fatty, going bald. So please go with it, Chris. It's the only thing he has going right now. What do you mean? It's the only thing I have going. <laughs> <laughs> but thank oh, you know. so much for coming. We got that out of the way. Now our socials real quick. You can email us at nerd hell, the nerd hell podcast at gmail.com. Chat with us. We got Twitter at nerd hell podcast.com. We're on anchor, mm -hmm. Spotify, YouTube. Thank yep. you so much for airsoft Eddie for coming on the show and real quick before every end of the episode we have a tradition because canonically we're both in hell and we give one go to hell at the end of every episode my go to hell is gonna be to colonel sanders for what he did to the chicken industry my god yeah stanley <laughs> okay so my go to hell um is nicotine gum because it's so hard to open <laughs> oh god you gotta yeah. go to hell, Fatty. Yeah, you know what? I've got a big go to hell. Go to hell. It's a McDonald's. What For me, an epidemic out of obesity <laughs> and not really doing anything to help it. I was gonna, I, I was waiting for you to say Twitch, but McDonald's, you heard it here first. Yeah, go to hell at McDonald's. Well, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna put a, fl I'm gonna put a, a flaming shot through the flag of McDonald's. And by the way, this video is sponsored by The Whopper. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever wa have you ever wanted to poison your children and yourself for five dollars? Come on down to McDonald's. <laughs> for real. Okay. With that, have a wonderful night, folks. Bye. Bye.